Greetings, greetings. What a special day for us to be sharing with you a, a celebration of 20 states in America in, in just two years since 2021 have taken the initiative to protect the civil rights of our children growing up in their states. They get confused as they go through puberty. They hear all the social media and this just reinforcement from the Biden administration, all these popular figures that if you're going through something, you might be transgender and, and, and kids have We've all been hearing about this. Uh, 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 people like Chloe Cole at 15, after just a couple of doctor's visits, were talked into unceremoniously having a double mastectomy. And as a lot of 15-year-old girls would 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 not fully understand the, the risks and the rewards of such a, a drastic surgery at 15 years old. By the time she was 18, th this, um, well, she said it herself, it, it ruined her childhood. And we protect our children from smoking. We protect them from having to fight in the military, we protect them from driving until a certain age, drinking alcohol, taking anabolic steroids, you know, uh, that was popular in the 80s. And uh, Help Not Harm is about taking uh, the opportunity we have as parents in the community and, and having our government uh, protect the children when the parents and the doctors and the other people around them uh, may uh, make their lives and their livelihood a, a lesser priority. So we are here today at the Family Policy Alliance to celebrate that just this week, this week in August of 2023, we reached 20 states that are protecting children. We want to go all the way to 30 states, but we have some incredible guests on, and they're going to talk about how this works. And folks, you all are the, the supporters of this movement, the social conservative movement led uh, in many ways with the Family Policy Alliance and the alliances we formed. And, and the most important one is the Alliance of Family Policy Councils in the state. We have with us David Walls of, of the Kentucky Family Forum. We have Gene Mills of Louisiana Family Forum. And, and uh, we have John Rustin of the North Carolina Family Policy Council here to talk about all three of these states and what they went through to protect children, something that should have been organic and easy and unanimous even a decade ago. But it was a big fight. And these are the heroes of America right now. This is the number one issue going into the 24 election. We're going to hear from them. The, First question to you, uh, brother uh, uh, David, because you you passed this first in Kentucky, is how important is this issue? Is it is it do people care about this, or is it just a political issue like for campaign ads, or is this a kitchen table mom and dad are invested issue? Craig, it's it, it's good to be with you. L let me just say this has been one of the most um, encouraging issues that I've seen in terms of uh, grassroots support. Uh, church engagement, uh, just really a, an outpouring of, of concern about what you just talked about. And, and as, as uh, we get to take a moment to celebrate what, what we were able to help accomplish in Kentucky and so many of our, our brothers and sisters in the family policy movement, protecting kids, protecting millions of kids across the nation, you know, really this is all about um, protecting uh, the innocence of our children and recognizing that each and every child is created in the image of God as a as a male and female, and they deserve to be loved, treated with dignity, and affirmed in who God really created them to be. And that was one of our um, big um, message points here in Kentucky. That this was this was not about um, targeting any any uh, anyone. This was about protecting kids. Uh, and I'm just so thankful for uh, the body of Christ here in uh, in Kentucky that rallied around our General Assembly to pass our uh, our help not harm law earlier this year. We had to override our, our governor's veto. Uh, governor Andy Bashir is a Democrat. Uh, he vetoed that bill, but our legislature overwhelmingly overrode his veto early this year and thankful for that. Uh, you know, and I'll, I'll just share one little uh, example. When, when things were kind of perilous and we had a, a moment where it looked like the bill might not move forward, uh, we really saw the people of Kentucky respond, churches and pastors across the state. And I just heard story after story of, of pastors and church leaders re reaching out to their legislators to encourage them, to affirm them in that uh, this was the time, this was the moment that the Lord had provided for us to protect our, our children from irreparable harm. So I'm excited that we were able to get that done here in Kentucky. And it continues to reverberate as we're in an important um, campaign season with all of our statewides up on the ballot uh, in November of this year. Absolutely. And um, you you did show the way for a lot of states. And I think the momentum of we folks, the, the body of Christ, uh, um, the word tells us to work together. You know, uh, iron shop and sharpens iron. There's one body. There, there's one spirit um, and we are working together. And so there's been a lot of momentum since this little thing started in 
uh, um, 2021 and protecting the children in Arkansas and Kentucky uh, move forward. Uh, next up, and you're going to notice a theme here. We're going to talk about your governors in, in a second, guys. So you got to have to unpack that too much. But uh, Gene Mills, Louisiana Family Forum, you, you had an experience that you've been working on for a couple of years. You came close there, right? And t- tell us what, what got you across the line this year in protecting children in the great state of Louisiana. Well, thank you, Craig, and appreciate all the good work you do at the Family Policy Alliance and with the network throughout the United States. We are making a difference, and I think that's the message we want to communicate. The important thing for us in Louisiana was the fact that our governor sold himself as a conservative Democrat, pro-life, pro-Second Amendment, and friendly to the family. Women's sports proved that was not the case, and the fact that he had taken the LGBT and set them right next to him on the fourth floor at the Capitol where his office is, is so located to infiltrate all the policy throughout the state. He really was carrying a national agenda inside of a state that didn't look fondly at that agenda. So basically we had to take on a militant LGBT governor and we did it with initially an indifferent legislative body. They wanted to talk about the fiscal issues and the budget and education and the roads and crime. And it took three years for our author, who is a freshman lawmaker, to finally embolden the courage to go ahead and put up the kind of fight that needed to be put up in order to carry this. And that fight prevailed, even though the leadership tried to stop it. We had this bill recommitted on two or three occasions. And initially it was the body saying, look, look, these ladies just have their hair on fire. We said, no, these are moms with their hearts on fire because you're talking about their kids. And nobody's got the right to harm a child. And we said, this is the pro-life message of today. We've got to begin to care for life from the earliest moments of conception until natural death. And that includes our children. No one has a right to harm a child. Not even somebody that wears governor in front of their name or parent as a name. And that, that had to do with principal conflicts about how do we do what's in the best interest of a child, even if we got bad actors involved. We got an indifferent legislature to hear from the churches, the governor's pastor, a priest in the Catholic church, who we just two weeks ago had to bury a good friend of mine, Mark Beard, preached a message on this and said, basically, there's no appropriate way to do this. This does not align with the biblical understanding of life, of protection, and of affording dignity to all human life. When a child goes to a doctor and says, I hate my body, the doctor ought not be able to say, we agree with you. And that message sold and it prevailed bipartisan. And, and that's the most amazing thing to me, Gene, is um, the support for this is not conventional at all. People said this was uh, Christian conservatives, Republicans, um, but the evidence is everywhere that that's not what we're, we're talking about, shared values. In, in, in America here, across religions, across faiths, across uh, uh, um, ethnicities, cultures, and everything else. And uh, that's been evident in North Carolina too, hasn't it, John Rustin? You, you, th- just this week, you became the 20th state. You overrode your governor as well. That was just as difficult as it was in Kentucky and Louisiana. And we're going to unpack that in a second here. It's, it's difficult to uh, uh, override governors, folks. That's not normal in America. You do that once in a movement, it sends a a very loud message. Uh, These folks on this call have done it three times on one issue, and they have other colleagues, maybe in your state, that have done the very same thing. They they passed this right through their legislature, right over their governor's veto pen, because kids are that important to parents. And and, uh, is that what you're experiencing, John? It's It's a different coalition of people that show up to get involved in this in North Carolina, wasn't it? Well, Craig, thank you. It's great to be with you. And yes, it's, uh, gosh, I mean, we've talked about being part of the body of Christ, being one body, but there are lots of parts of that body. And uh, every part is so critically important. So uh, from the legislators who championed this legislation in the General Assembly to um, allied organizations like Family Policy Alliance and others who work together with the Family Policy Council to promote this very important legislation, to all the citizens across the state who get involved and contact their legislators and ask them, urge them to do the right thing. Um, All of those uh, efforts are so critically important. 
uh, as you mentioned, and as my colleagues have said in their states, um, our governor vetoed uh, the Help Not Harm legislation in North Carolina, along with a number of other bills. I think he's ordered a 55-gallon drum of red ink uh, because his veto uh, stamp has been so active lately. Um, but we actually, on Wednesday, our state legislature overrode six bills that the governor had vetoed. Uh, one was the Parents' Bill of Rights here for North Carolina. Another was our Fairness in Women's Sports Act. And the third was the, the bill, the Help Not Harm bill, that would prohibit um, gender transition surgeries and the administration of puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones uh, to minors in North Carolina. Uh, it was kind of interesting in the process that folks, uh, opponents of the legislation said, how can you pass a parents' rights bill on one hand and say you're for parents' rights, but then take away those rights um, when it comes to this legislation and prohibit uh, these kinds of so-called treatments on minors. Our response to that is parents' rights end where harm to a child begins and even before. And so there's not a conflict with this. These are very common sense and critically important laws that protect the well-being and the health of children and families in North Carolina, uh, in Kentucky, in Louisiana, and in all of the other states that have passed it. Um, and we are excited to be the 20th state. I was thinking, hey, you know, we're the, the most recent one, the last one. In the Tour de France, uh, there is a car that uh, is called the Lantern Rouge that kind of comes along and is the, uh, you know, sort of leads the last rider in the race uh, in. But that rider is still in the race. So North Carolina is excited to be among the states, the 20 states that have passed this critically important legislation. And we want to do what we can um, to champion this legislation in other states across the nation. And we're really grateful for uh, the incredible work of Family Policy Alliance and your leadership in helping to shepherd these efforts. So uh, thank you, Craig, and my, my brothers and colleagues. And so th this is, I, so let's, I'm sitting at home right now. Th this, is, this is an issue. Most of the time I talk about what I do for a living, the issues I'm involved in, nobody cares, right? Uh, uh, soccer games, you know, uh, 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 meetings at the school, you name it, in, in town, just my buddies from college texting each other. Everybody just thinks that this is the most ludicrous thing they've ever heard. Uh, uh, polling verifies this. I believe that 48% of the Democratic Party uh, uh, supports what we're doing right now. Uh, their number two candidate for president, uh, RFK Jr., is essentially using our talking points, the same as David Chappelle and J.K. Rowling and others that, that you folks and FPA, our team and everybody else, we created this. We've really kind of changed a, a, a national and, and maybe even a global conversation from when you all began this work in 2017. And um, this is this is a big deal for what you just said, John. I, I got an easy answer for that. When we, I, I knew uh, somebody, one of my good friends, parents bought him anabolic steroids because they wanted their son to make the uh, varsity football team in the 80s. And uh, people say, well, what was the problem with that? I said, well, he made the team. He was a lot more popular, but he's never been able to have kids because he got uh, can cancer, you know, and, and, and had to have the, the male parts removed that, you know, uh, um, produce, you know, your ability to reproduce. And that was when he was 22 years old. So, you know, I've known the guy. I'm in my 50s now. I think he would have rethought that. Making the football team wasn't that important uh, uh, for him to lose that part of his body. Uh, for his pride and his self-esteem while he was in high school. And, and so I think the parents know that San Francisco recalled their own school board 75% uh, uh, to 25% without any of our FPCs doing anything. So I'm not taking credit for that one. But the body Christ is moving. Parents are motivated. The people listening to this right now are saying, um, I'm seeing these Republic, uh, the Republican and Democratic Party doing their thing, running their silly ads, running their presidential campaigns, trying to, as Gene alluded to, do anything but talk about this. You too, John. This is what America's going to be talking about next year, I think. So uh, let's do a round robin here. Uh, uh, um, we'll, we'll go in reverse order. Uh, John, um, you know, I, I think this is going to be a big deal in, in 2024. I think this is the kind of issue that moves people from one side of the ledger to the other. What are your thoughts in North Carolina? Well, I absolutely think so, Craig. And I think because we're hearing more stories and, and real life stories of individuals who have been led down this path of gender transition um, and then have, uh, you know, decided that, hey, this is not the right path for me, but I've had surgery that's removed perfectly healthy body parts or I have been administered uh, 
you know, puberty blockers and cross sex hormones that have sterilized me and have caused irreversible damage to my body. As we're hearing more of these stories um, of real life people having real life problems and real life regret, uh, I think the, the public is paying much more attention and seeing that this is not a political issue. This is an issue of, uh, as, as Gene and David have said, of human dignity, of health, of safety, uh, and all of these important issues that we all can uh, uh, relate to and attest to. We have a, a young lady in North Carolina, Prisha Mosley, who was led down this path. Um, and she is detransitioning now, but has had irreversible harm done to her body. Um, she had some very unfortunate circumstances happen to her earlier in her life that affected her, her mental stability and uh, created a lot of psychological issues. And her doctors all told her that gender transition was the answer to all of these issues that she had had. And that has been absolutely not the case. So she's actually suing her doctors in uh, court in North Carolina. And so it's going to be very interesting to see how this legislation proceed, or excuse me, this litigation proceeds. But the fact is that we're just seeing more and more people who are personally affected by this, um, whose real life stories are uh, bringing the the concerns and issues of this to light. And so, yes, I think it is. Um, it's not just a political issue. It is a real life human issue that a lot of people can relate to and consider to be very serious and very important. Yeah. What do you think about that, Gene? I totally agree. I believe that scripture is clear. The, the Bible speaks to everything that pertains to life and godliness. Andrew Kepper said some time ago as a philosopher, there's not one ounce of creation over which Christ doesn't cry, mine. And so when they tell us, well, look, you're drifting out of your lane. You're supposed to only deal with the life issue or the social issues. We had an interesting conversation when the top lobby in the state, Louisiana Association for Business and Industry, and a number of the other oil and gas groups came to us and said, man, what, we were wrong, you were right. I said, what do you mean by that? They said, well, we get all these guys, we invest a ton of money in, we support their campaigns, we cultivate them to run for office, and then they, they blow our issues at the Capitol. You got these guys that stand for you and you don't do any of that. All you do is develop relationships with them and share principled policy. And they're 100% on your issues and 100% on our issues. They say, we need you to help us field the next wave of candidates. So I think this is the natural migration of principled policy in the arena of ideas. And in the arena of ideas, truth always prevails if we don't get in the way. And that's the key is to get our messaging points. And by the way, we pray for God's messaging points every day. We pray to be uh, able to cast a message that impacts people's lives and it addresses the need that's before them and the concerns they have, but proposes solutions as well. And that's what we were able to do with both women's sports and transgender surgeries. Well, we could not have done this without you all. And uh, I'm gonna come to you in, in one second, John, but um, I gotta take a break for our audience because we're, we're gonna be winding up here in a few minutes. And I want them to know how they get a hold of the three of you in particular. And so as I'm talking now, uh, there's going to be some links and they have been posted as we go in, in the comments of where you're watching this, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube or Twitch or wherever else, um, you'll see the links and, and you can find the ability for the way to say, this is amazing. I had no idea. A lot of people watch this are going to say, I had no idea there are family policy councils in my state. I, I, you know, where do I get involved? And, and folks, the links are there, right? So, uh, um, and we have them on, on our, uh, aggregator page, SoCon Report, that, that uh, a link will be put up there too. There are links to the state organization for permanently on that front page. So you can bookmark that page and you can visit them every day. And, and uh, that sends you the link to their location. And we want you to get involved locally, folks. All politics are local. People think this thing gets resolved by who has the most money to spend on TV ads. It, that was, that's gone away 20 plus years ago, folks. We're back to how America was founded. The real way to win an election is door to door, uh, uh, the grassroots up. And that's the way our organizations were created. So we want you to get involved with them today. Please, please, please take what I'm saying seriously so they can do the amazing work that these three folks have done. It amazing. All three of you have overridden governors, John. Um, is this North Carolina's had some fits and starts? You're a swing state, probably more so than anybody else on this call. People are going to say, you're supposed to run away from this if you want to win a 50-50 state, John. 
I'm going to let you have the last word here uh, because I think you can speak for what our, our movement thinks about and what we're mobilizing to do. And if you like what John says, you get involved with us uh, um, and, and we're going to we're going to make a real difference in America. Go ahead, John. Yeah, Craig, thank you. Uh, yeah, these issues are so critically important. As I mentioned earlier, these are real human life issues. Um, and as Gene said, these are issues that are consistent with biblical principles, with God's laws, God's plan, God's desire for us. We're just in the incredibly fortunate <laughs> position to be able to advocate for these things um, in our various states and, of course, Family Policy Alliance on the national level. Um, so, you know, again, these are not political issues, but they certainly operate within a political framework. And we've got to understand that if we don't have the, the right people in place, um, decision makers, policy makers in place who are going to promote uh, biblical values, uh, these things that really seek the best for human, for human dignity, uh, for the lives of our fellow citizens, for our neighbors. Um, you know, th th those are the kinds of people that we need to elect, those who are going to honor that. And so um, not only do we work in the halls of our general assemblies and in other elected bodies, but also um, working to make sure that the folks who get elected um, come in with the, uh, you know, the right principles in the first place. So it's critically important. These issues are absolutely at the forefront uh, of the conscience of our states and the conscience of our nation. Um, and it's just incumbent upon all of us by God's grace and with God's strength and wisdom uh, to elect uh, uh, officials that are going to uh, honor these values uh, and pass good laws. And that's what we're all about. Um, at our various uh, state level family policy councils and also uh, in our alliance with Family Policy Alliance. So Craig, thanks so much for the opportunity. It's been a real pleasure. Well, we couldn't have done it. We, we didn't do any of the work, the three of you did, all three of you overriding governors. Uh, uh, by the way, I believe our stat is about 20% uh, of the passage of the 20 states were overridden by governors. Folks, like I said, tax cut movements, welfare reform movements, other things that have swept our country uh, take 30, 40, 50 years, and, and, and there's no overriding of governors and presidents involved. This is truly grassroots. It's captured uh, uh, the attention of our nation. And um, well, I'm just so privileged to be able to introduce the, the, the voters, the, the moms and dads that are concerned at home right now saying, folks, this is coming to your school. Uh, um, it's in nearly every public school system in America, many of them uh, uh, not for the right reasons, uh, fear-based are, are starting to retract and pull it out. But you need to rise up. You need to get involved. You can find that education of what's going on in your state from your family policy council. You will note that there are 40 family policy councils, not 50, plus one. Um, that's because we're growing. We're a growing movement. Uh, um, it's extraordinary. These folks uh, combined uh, with their peers have uh, over 320 employees, uh, $50 million in revenue, and organized more than 50,000 churches, not for elections, 52 weeks out of the year. Uh, um, Christians first. Uh, we get involved in public policy to honor the Lord, uh, but we find our inspiration and our guidance in the word. So we hope that you'll consider getting involved in these three states or wherever you live. And if, and if you're in a state that does not yet have a policy uh, uh, council, you can reach out the Family Policy Alliance. and We'd love to talk to you about getting one started there. Uh, God bless you all. Thank you for your, we could not have had this celebration without you. Uh, we could not have had a bipartisan uh, uh, sweeping of our country with the protection and civil rights of our, our children without the Family Policy Councils. And um, so as we go out from here, continue to look for us. Uh, we'll, we'll be bringing more stories from these Family Policy Councils as they uh, uh, meet with success, uh, uh, um, failure, and, and, and every challenge along the way. Um, and we look forward to working with you as we advance help not harm through the remaining 30 states in our country and the District of Columbia. Thank you and God bless.